Hello and welcome to another video of my Intentional Attention ASMR Collective. First off, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to click on this video and check it out. And really in the spirit of evolution, the idea of doing something new and taking ASMR to another level, I wanted to do a reaction video on Reddit. And you know, I actually saw a video from Chai Mountain ASMR where she had done this probably a little more effectively than I am going to do it. Um, but the idea is to sort of read something out loud and then sort of give my opinion. This is maybe the opinion you've never asked for, um, but it's also underneath relationship advice. Now, I can tell you that any wisdom I have through and around relationships is because I stub my toe really hard and... You know, it was really uncomfortable for a while, but you know, you get through it and you do it. So sometimes it's kind of interesting to take the perspective on of somebody else's problem. And that was kind of the idea uh, behind a Reddit reaction video. So let's go ahead and click on one here and let's read uh, the um, post before we read the comments. Because really a lot of times the comments are really where the real gold lies. So. Let's see. So the title is I, 26-year-old female, don't know how I feel about my boyfriend, 24-year-old male. Okay, so <laughs> what is the title though, right? I'm sure she probably did the post before she did the title. So let's, let, let's see how she really does feel about this. Uh, dating someone younger. Okay, so she's 26 and he's 24 and she's dating someone two years younger. Got it. Okay. Uh, let's see, dating someone younger, I don't mind it, but recently he's been telling me, uh, stop treating me like a child, or what are you, my mom? To be honest, that's just how I treat everyone I care about. I say, hey, do, so you, I say, should say you, hey, do you have everything? Did you lock your car? Oh, do you have a little something in the corner of your mouth? Here, let me get it for you. <laughs> uh, I had to, um, oh, sorry. I had said, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was making you feel that way. I just asked because I didn't hear the car door click or, oh, I just want to make sure we have everything before we leave. Are there any tips for dating someone younger? I know he's a man and I'm treating him exactly like every other guy I've been with, but I don't know. Maybe our age actually bugs him. Well, man, I would have to put myself into the... Uh, the body of a 24-year-old man to ask myself how I would feel about that. You know, the reality is, is any person that you're with, you're with for a reason. And there was some sort of initial spark. And, you know, you can see these things as really the interpretation or the meaning that we add to them, right? So on one hand, she wants to you know, make sure something doesn't get left behind. And then what's happening is those words leave her mouth and they enter the boyfriend's ears and his brain is saying, you're nitpicking on me. So it's, it's really a matter of not necessarily changing their language, but changing the reaction to the language, if that makes sense. Again, I just completely 100% my opinion. It does sound like um, he may be reacting in a way where he is looking at that two-year difference and thinking, oh, she's older than me or something like that. When in reality, she doesn't probably doesn't want to be his mom um, because if you haven't had kids at 26, you probably don't want to be a mom anytime soon. It's, again, just a guess. I don't know this person. They are randomly on Reddit. Uh, there are no comments on this one. I did go into the new. I did sort of according to new. But yeah, I would say that that, again, is the meaning that you're adding on to what a person is saying. So once some, somebody's words leave their lips, it's really up to you what you decide to do with them. Let's go do another. Oh boy, this one is a long one. Is my boyfriend a 23-year-old male justified in wanting to break up with me, 23-year-old female, going on a road trip with my ex, 23-year-old male. A lot of 23-year-olds there, right? So I, 23-year-old female, met my ex, Hank, 
freshman year of college and started dating shortly afterwards. Hank and I are both very practical people, and we always knew we most likely wouldn't stay together forever. I was going to get my PhD, and he was going straight into the workforce. Additionally, we always disagreed on important lifestyle things like children. Okay, that's a pretty big, pretty big disagreement right there. <laughs> Furthermore, while we get along great, there's always been issues with romance and sex. Hank struggled with complimenting me and had low drive. Come senior year, we decided to break up and still remain friends and just remain friends. I ended up on one coast with him on the other in the United States. We're both very happy for each other. After a couple months later, we got on the apps and we were happily supporting each other's dating lives. Just to pause here, this sounds like a very, very mature couple that totally understands the reality of being together in a relationship. Okay, let's continue. Ten months after me and Hank broke up, my current, I met my current boyfriend, Chris, 22-year-old male. Chris and I fell for each other quickly and made things official almost immediately. From the get-go, I let Chris know that I was still close to my ex, but that there was absolutely no romantic feelings. He was understandably uneasy about this, and was firm on telling me not to bring him up in conversation or talk about him at all. I made sure always prioritizing to prioritize Chris, spending every weekend and many weeknight nights with him, and never calling or texting Hank when we were together. I even moved several virtual plans, Hank and I sometimes game together, when Chris wanted to hang. After around two months of dating Chris, I planned a trip to visit Hank. Chris was furious and distraught, telling me I was prioritizing Hank over him and it wasn't normal to be so close to your ex. I told him I understood his feelings, but I wasn't going to throw away an almost five-year friendship. I ended up going. I slept on Hank's couch. We had fun. There was no romantic feelings at all. Chris took some time to get over it and brought it up a couple times, but eventually I thought we moved past it. Now, four months after my trip to Texas... I had some vacation time and decided to take a four-day vacation with Hank. No, Chris had work and would not be able to spend vacation time with me. Chris was absolutely fuming and uh, gave me an ultimatum saying, if you go on this trip, I won't be here when you come back. I was very hurt and tried to bargain with him, but he insisted that it was fucked up to be going on a road trip with your ex and that his heart couldn't handle it. I was torn but this was a trip that we'd been planning for many, many months, and I'd already spent money and wanted to see my friend. I came back this weekend, and Chris told me he wants to break up. He literally said, I'm the perfect girl, but he can't deal with this one thing. I'm devastated and still can't understand how he could supposedly love me so much and talk about things like marriage only to end things over this. Um... Am I the asshole for what I did? Well, 23-year-old female, that's kind of a tough one. Uh, You know, I am a firm believer that communication heals and is the glue that sticks things together. Because think about all breakdowns, right? A breakdown happens when there is either thwarted expectations For example, he thought that you would not be communicating with this person um, or a miscommunication. Now, it sounds like she did communicate with him directly in a sense that she said, well, I'm going to do this. And regardless of the way that he felt about it, she was just going to, you know, make this happen. Now, going back to the expectations, you know, the expectations were if you were going to be with Chris then you wouldn't really be communicating with Hank. And it's really a shame that you found some sort, well, it's not really a shame, but what is so is that in Hank, she found maybe three of the four things that were matching up. And it sounds like Chris is probably a good fit too, sans this one issue that he's got. And if if Chris loves her, he would look past this. And try to find a way to be able to tell her, you know, 
let's do these things together. Like, in other words, if somebody doesn't like something and they come to me and they say, fix this thing, or, you know, I don't like this thing, but they don't offer an alternative, it's really hard to, um, what am I trying to say? It's, it's really hard to, you know, honor that in that particular space. So really, I think they both are kind of a little bit overreacting to it. And really, if they just got together and communicated their feelings as to why, and here's the real big secret. Clicking down three layers is really what I would do if they were sitting here right here with me and we were going to do some counseling. So um, she actually didn't, <laughs> didn't say her name, so I'll say her. So I would say with her, I would say, okay, so going and seeing Hank and your friend uh, makes you feel good. Well, why does it make you feel good? And then she would answer, and then I would say, okay, so it makes you feel good when you're around him because he makes you laugh and you like to go do things together. Now, what are the things that you like to do that you haven't been able to do with Chris? And then she would answer that and say, um, go to the beach, uh, because I like to put my feet in the sand and, you know, and, and eventually you would land on the thing together. That is the reason why the action occurred. And even that to Chris, I would say, okay, Chris, why does her hanging out with Hank bother you? Are you afraid that they're going to have sex? Are you afraid that he is going to take her back or something kind of along those lines? Are you afraid that something is going to happen when they're together that's going to affect your relationship? So really, after everyone sort of calms down and communicates after those three click downs, that would be the super duper sweet spot, the sweet spot where you would find uh, the things that um, really are making people tick um, because that is what makes a good relationship stay solid is that communication, that authenticity, and then integrity around your words. So again, when words leave your mouth, it's what other people do uh, that is allows for the reaction or the meaning to occur. So this is my experiment. I went from whispering to soft-spoken to getting a little worked up. And um, yeah, if you liked this, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know if you'd like to hear more reaction videos. I did jump a little ahead going to relationship advice, and uh, I probably would have read these a little bit better before and finding ones that I thought I would, might have some answers for. But, you know, it's all about the meaning, and it's all about uh, the meaning, and it's all about what we do with other people's words. So I hope you got some value out of this, and I hope this was uh, relaxing to you. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button below. I appreciate you and want you to be part of my tribe. And I just, I love you so much. I'm so glad we could spend a few minutes together today and I got to get back to work. So I'm going to uh, talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.